Welcome again to our talks on machine translation. This time, we'll cover the approach that dominates the field these days, the phrase-based model. Unlike other approaches, the phrase-based model is very simple and it requires only parallel text for the training. And that's definitely one of the reasons that it lies behind the most available MT systems. Here is a little recap of what we've covered so far. We know how important input preprocessing is, and we know how to evaluate machine translation ma manually or automatically. We also know where to gather parallel training data from and how to align it at the level of sentences or individual words. So we're ready to delve into individual approaches and we'll start with direct phrase-based machine translation. The phrase-based model assumes that a given sentence can be translated by breaking it into a few pieces and translating each of them independently. Let's have a look at this example. Horní zákon upravuje využití nerostného bohatství. Here is the English gloss, mining act, regulates the use of mineral resources. Obviously, word-for-word -word translation wouldn't quite work because Czech doesn't have any articles. But if we allow to translate využití as the use, then this would be a good phrasal, phrasal translation. And similarly, for this nerostného of mineral. The assumption that each of the phrases can be translated independently of the other ones is often very strong especially if the phrases are cut too short. So, for example, this word horní has many different meanings in Czech and mining is only one of them. And other meanings of this word would be top or upper. And only if this word is followed by the word zákon, which is act or law, only then we would clearly say that this is mining. So the phrase-based model, in order to perform well, needs to translate these two words at once, or in other words, it needs to see this whole phrase, horní zákon, in the training data. If this sentence happened to occur in our training data, we have it word aligned, and the phrase-based model can extract all segments from it, long and short, that correspond to each other across languages. These are all the extracted phrases. We know that horní zákon was translated as mining act in this sentence, that horní zákon upravuje was the beginning of the sentence, mining act regulates, and so on. And also the complete sentence, horní zákon upravuje využití nerostného bohatství, full stop, was here. So this is kind of copy if you can strategy. If the training data included the whole sentence, the model keeps it and produces it as good as the people translated it for the training data. If it's not the whole sentence, then at least some long phrase will be used whenever possible. And only as the last resort, the model will try translating the sentence word for word. This strategy also works across a wide range of languages and text types. Given a new sentence, the phrase-based model first considers all phrases it has seen in the training data that are applicable in this sentence. So we know that horní zákon can be translated as mining act, or that these two words individually can be translated as top or upper zákon as law. And similarly for all the phrases in this sentence. Then sněmovny or sněmovna, house of representatives, house of deputies, schůze is a meeting, and this Z is a preposition, such as of or from. So this was kind of a pre-processing step, the collection of all translation options. For the given input sentence, we know how each of its spans can be individually translated. So for example, this very beginning, ze schůze, can be translated word for word as of or from, schůze as meeting, or these two words can be translated at once as from the meeting. What comes next is the main search of the phrase-based model. All these translation options can be seen as puzzle pieces or dominoes. And the computer has now to pick a subset of them to cover the whole input sentence and to form a nice English sentence on the output. Starting from the empty hypothesis, the computer can either first use some of the phrases from the beginning, such as from the meeting, or it can pick to start right at the end such as mining act. And other options where to start are obviously possible as well. So there are many possible starting hypotheses. Each of these starting hypotheses is then expanded in all possible ways. So from the meeting can be extended by attaching the parliament here. 
or by editing went out and so on. And this mining act can be also extended by from the meeting or was excluded. Each of these partial hypotheses is scored by a number of scores, by a number of separate models. Some of them indicate how well this English uh, string reflects the original Czech meaning. Some uh, other models reflect how well the words fit together, the puzzle pieces match. As you see, the search space, the space of all possible hypotheses, is extremely large because of the large number of choices that we have for each input span and also because of the many possible reorderings. So we cannot afford to uh, search through this whole space and less promising hypotheses are pruned and never explored any further. The main parameter that controls the amount of pruning in the default search is called the stack limit. In the animation we see how different subparts of the search space are explored with less and less pruning. The better scoring or surviving hypotheses are gradually expanded until at the very end, the whole input sentence is covered. As we've said, all the hypotheses are scored by a number of separate components of the model or features, if you wish. And we'll discuss these in some future uh, MT talk. So the output that we would like to get from the decoder would be mining act was excluded from the meeting of the parliament. But there are a number of things that can go wrong in this sentence. For example, the mining act is the translation of horny zákon, words appearing at the very end of the sentence. And one of the components of the score, the reordering model, thinks it, that it's very costly to start translating with something from the very end of the sentence. So this translation can be seen as unlikely and it can be pruned away and not considered at all. Another problem is that here we have the phrase of the parliament, but in our translation option collection, the word sněmovny was translated and seen in our uh, training data only without the preposition, only as the parliament. So this off can be easily missing. One of the reasons of the success of the phrase-based model that should not be forgotten is the availability of an open source implementation, the Moses decoder. Since the creation in 2005 and 6, the Moses decoder has received support from a large number of European research grants, including Moses Core, the one which funded these talks, by the way. Many researchers and research institutes worldwide contributed to the Moses source code. So the decoder boasts many advanced features. And there are also video lectures and tutorials available on just installing and using Moses. So that was it. Our first talk that finally covered a particular empty model, the phrase-based translation, as implemented in the open source decoder Moses. In the coming talks, we'll discuss other possible approaches to machine translation.